previously, we've discussed solving application problems or word problems in which we're using systems of equations to solve, or namely word problems where we have two variables and we set up a system of two equations to solve the problem. And to, to solve, we're using these methods of either substitution or elimination. Both methods always work and it's a, a, a personal preference in terms of which method to use. Uh, I want to talk about one specific type of word problem in this video, and these are problems that have to do with motion. And for these motion problems, we're going to use the fact that distance is equal to rate times the time. So rate is another word for speed. So for example, if you're traveling in uh, let's say you're, you're in a car and you're traveling 30 miles per hour for one hour. So the speed of 30 miles per hour, the rate of 30 miles per hour, meaning each hour you travel 30 miles. So if you're driving at 30 miles per hour or you're in a car at 30 miles per hour for an hour, you travel 30 miles. But if, you, if you're in a car traveling 30 miles per hour for, let's say, three hours, how far do you travel? Well, each hour is 30 miles. So in three hours, you travel 30 times three or 90 miles. So the, the speed times the time equals the distance, or the rate times the time equals the distance. So we're going to use this fact to solve these problems. And I want to work through three of them, one of each type. So you see there's three variables here, three letters, distance, rate, and time. So in a problem, you could be asked to solve for either the distance, solve for the rate, or solve for the time. So I want to, I want to do one of each so we make sure we cover all the bases. So let's look at number one. Roger walks and jogs to his favorite coffee shop to study each weekend. He averages three miles an hour walking. Okay, so that's the rate of walking and five miles an hour jogging. The distance from his home to the coffee shop is 14 miles. He makes the trip in a total of four hours. For how long does Roger jog? Okay, so I like to set these problems up using a table. Uh, and that just helps me to organize the information. And so what that table looks like is something like this. So we have distance, rate, and time. And we know that the rate or the speed times the time is equal to the distance. And we're talking about two cases here when he's walking and when he's jogging. So we're given in the problem that he averages three miles an hour walking. So that's his rate for walking, it's three. And five miles an hour when he's jogging. So his rate, so this first column is rate. His rate when he's jogging is five. The question is for how long does Roger jog? So that's the unknown. So let's say X equals the time that he is jogging. Okay, so that's, that's what we're looking for. But we also need, I mean, we're, the question isn't saying how long does he walk for also, but we need to also consider that. So let's say y is equal to the time walking. Okay, so we could put a y here. And now we need to express the distance. Well, we know distance equals rate times time. If the rate is three and the time is y, then the distance would be three y. And also distance jogging 
if the rate is 5 and the time is x, the distance is 5 times x. Rate times time equals distance. Now, we know that the total distance, the distance from home to the coffee shop is 14 miles. Some of that 14 miles he's walking and some of that 14 miles he's jogging. So we know that these two distances have to add up to 14. And he makes the trip in four hours. So we don't know how long he was walking or how long he was jogging individually, but we know that those two have to add up to four. Okay, so there, that's two equations right there. This is, this is one equation. X plus Y equals four, or the time walking plus the time jogging together equal a total of four hours. And then the equation for distance. That's equation number two. So five times X plus three times Y or the distance walking plus the distance jogging equals the total distance of 14. Okay, so basically we take the problem. I like to take this problem and express the information in a table. Using that table, we're able to come up with these two equations. And now we have a system of equations to solve. So now at this point, the setup is done. It's no longer a word problem. Now we have to solve this system. And we have two methods, substitution or elimination. I'm going to use the elimination method here. So if we want to, let's say, eliminate the y's, if the second equation has a positive 3y, then the first equation needs a negative 3y. So we could take that first equation and multiply both sides by negative 3. And if we do that, the first equation becomes negative 3 times x minus 3 times y equals 4 times negative 3, which is negative 12. And the second equation remains 5x plus 3y is equal to 14. And this is what we need for elimination. We need the one of the variables to be equal and opposite. And now that we have that, once we add these two equations together, the negative 3y and the positive 3y, they cancel. And so if we add the left-hand side, the negative 3x and the positive 5x together, that gives us 2x. And on the right, a negative 12 and a positive 14 give us 2. And we're solving for x. So we could divide both sides by 2. Divide by 2 divide by 2. So we end up with x equals 1. And what does x stand for? Well, we established that in the beginning. x is the time jogging. And that's the question. For how long does Roger jog? So we would say he jogs for 1 Hour. We don't have to solve for y because we've already answered the question of how long does he jog for. Okay, so in this equation, or in this problem, sorry, we were trying to answer the question, how long? What is the time? So in question one, between distance rate and time, time was the, was the thing that we were looking for. Well, let's look at problem two. We're going to solve problem two exactly the same way. Karen's bike got a flat tire and she must walk the rest of the way to work. The bike was being ridden at nine miles per hour. Okay, so that's a rate. And Karen walks at a speed of four miles per hour. The distance 
from home to work is 22 miles and the total time for the trip was three hours. How far did she have to walk? Okay, so I'm gonna set up the same type of table. And there's two uh, there's two cases here when she's walking and when she's riding her bike. So walk and bike. And we know that rate times time is equal to distance. Okay, so we want to take the problem and convert it to a table. So let's see, we're given the bike was being ridden at nine miles per hour. So that's the rate for the bike, nine miles per hour. And Karen walks at a speed of four miles per hour. So that's the rate walking. The distance from home to work is 22 miles. Okay, so we don't know how much of that 22 miles she walked and how much of that 22 miles she rode a bike, but we know the total distance is 22 and the total time for the trip was three hours. Again, we don't know how that's split up, but we know the time spent walking plus the time spent on the bike is three. Okay, so we don't know how long she was riding. So we, let's call that X and we don't know how long she was biking. Let's call that Y. And we know that distance is equal to rate times time. So the distance would be 4x and the distance for riding the bike rate times time 9 times y is 9y. You want to avoid using your x and y for distance uh, because if you do that it, it causes you to have to use fractions in the problem. So I like to have my x and y be either something to do with the rate or the time. Okay, now just like in the first problem, here's one equation. The time spent walking plus the time spent biking equals a total of three hours. So x plus y is equal to three. And for the second equation, the distance she walked plus the distance she rode a bike equals a total distance of 22 miles. So that's four x plus 9y is equal to 3. So just like in the last problem, I'm going to use elimination again. And let's say if we want to eliminate the y, if the second equation has a positive 9y, the first equation needs a negative 9y. So we can multiply the first equation by negative nine. So that'll give us a negative nine y and a positive nine y, which is what we need for elimination. So the first equation, once we multiply both sides by negative nine would be negative nine x minus nine y is equal to three times negative nine, which is negative 27. Second equation could stay what it is, four x plus nine y is equal to three. Oh, sorry. Oop, let's go back here. That sorry, that's mistake. That three, four x plus nine y equals twenty two. Ah, yeah, that needs to be a twenty two. Okay, so when we add the two equations together, so now we're set up for elimination. So when we add these two equations together. The positive 9y, the negative 9y, they cancel. And so on the left-hand side, negative 9x and a positive 4x give us negative 5x. And on the right, a negative 27 and a positive 22. When we add them, we get a negative 5. Now, to solve for x, just one more thing to do. We'll divide by negative 5 to get the x by itself. And so we get x 
is equal to positive 1. Now, the question is, how far did she have to walk? So this is the distance walking. This is what we're looking for. How far did she have to walk? Well, the distance walking is 4 times x. We just solved for x. We know x is equal to 1. So the distance would be 4 times 1. So we could say, final answer, she walked 4, four miles. Okay, so in problem one, let's scroll back up here. We were looking for an amount of time. He jogs for a time of one hour. Problem two, we're looking for a distance. She walked a distance of four miles. The third option is to look for the rate. So a boat traveled for three hours with a six mile per hour current to reach the picnic area. The return trip against the same current took 12 hours. Find the speed of the boat in still water. So we've got some water here and the water is moving. There's a current in the water. So the current is six miles per hour. So when the boat, and this is, this is the boat, and we can put a little sail on the boat. Okay, so when the boat is traveling with the current, the, the current's gonna speed it up more than it would normally go. And when it's going against the current, the current's gonna slow it down. Okay, this this diagram isn't necessary for you know for for you in doing this problem, but it's just for me to help explain it. What's important here is that we're going to organize this information again using a table. So rate times time is equal to distance, and so the boat is traveling with the current and then against the current. So let's see, the boat traveled for three hours with a six mile per hour current. Okay, so the time with the current is given, that's three. The return trip against the same current took 12 hours. So the time against the current was 12. Now, we don't know the speed of the boat in still water. So let's say x equals speed of boat in still water. which means the, the rate with the current would be the speed of the boat normally plus that six mile an hour current. And then how fast is the boat going against the current? Well, it's going whatever it's able to go in still water and then minus the current, the current is slowing it down. So with the current, the current is increasing the speed against the current, the current is decreasing the speed. And now for distance, well, there's a couple of things we could do here. I know I said I don't like to use uh, X or Y for distance, but sometimes you have to. Uh, in this case, it's not a big deal. Sometimes it causes issues with making, uh, you have to work with fractions, but in this case you don't. So we could call the distance Y. And we could also have called that distance 
rate times time, so that could have been a three times x plus six. I'm gonna use y because I wanna use a system of two equations here. So here's one equation, rate times time equals distance. So x plus six times three is equal to y. And then here's the second equation, rate times time equals distance. So x minus six times 12 is equal to y. Now let's multiply through. So we could get rid of all of these parentheses. We could do three times the x plus six. So that first equation would be three x plus 18 is equal to y. And that second equation becomes 12 x minus 72 equals y. 12 times six is 72. Okay, so for the first two problems, I use elimination. For this one, I'm gonna use substitution. So this one is already nicely set up for substitution because both equations are solved for y. So what I'm gonna do is substitute. I'm gonna put this three x plus 18, which is equal to y. I'm gonna put that in for the y in the second equation. Now you could have solved this using elimination as well, but I think in this case, substitution works nicely. Okay, so that second equation, 12, instead of 12x minus 72 equals y, we're gonna use 12x minus 72 equals, instead of y, equals 3x plus 18. Okay, now we could solve for x. So let's add 72 to both sides. That will eliminate the 72 on the left. Remember, we wanna get x by itself, so move all the numbers to one side, x is to the other. So on the left-hand side, we have a 12 times x is equal to 3x plus 90 and we want to get rid of that 3x on the right hand side so we could subtract 3x from both sides those 3x's will cancel one positive one negative so we have 9 times x is equal to 90 And if we divide by nine, we will solve for x. So in this case, x is equal to 90 divided by nine, which is 10. And x was the speed of the boat in still water. And the question is asking, what is the speed of the boat in still water? find the speed of the boat in still water. So that's basically saying solve for x. So we could say the boat travels at, that's so our answer down here was x equals 10, x equal, or 10 is the speed of the boat, so at 10 miles per hour in still water water. All right. So this was an example of each of the three sort of general scenarios, a problem where you have to solve for distance, a problem where you have to solve for rate, and a problem where you have to solve for time. Now this could be a, a little variation between specific problems, but I like this general approach in which I take the information in the word problem and convert it to a table sort of helps me organize 
what I know, what I don't know, and what I'm looking for. Okay, that does it for this video. I hope this was helpful.